We were just trying to look at this example here, this really complicated looking example where we were trying to graph this, or sketch the graph, without using a calculator. And that's why I wrote down what, and we actually ended up finding out a lot of things. We used calculus to help us to find the maxes and mins, the point of inflection, where it's increasing, decreasing, where it's concave up or down, and even the y-intercept. And when we do that, we took a look at this, we saw that this is a nice graph here, but we didn't really know the exact values here for how high it goes and how low it goes. Of course, you could always find those points. I mean, you can always sit there and calculate those. But my point was just to show you that we can actually uh, plot a lot of really important things here. I mean, this right here, this is a minimum. Well, it's actually a local minimum. This over here, this is a local max. So without a calculator, we were able to, we were able to determine all of this, which is pretty cool. The only thing we didn't really know is the height here and the bottom part here, which we could have actually gone ahead and calculated. I just wanted to show you then how we can double check that this actually works, that you know we're as good as a calculator. Maybe we're just a bit slower. Um, so what I wanted to do then is show you, whoops, I better just clear all these. This is the last graph I had on here. There we go. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the equation for the graph. So the equation that I needed, well, the equation was right here, wasn't it? Yeah. So here it was. I wanted the points of inflection. Well, here's the original equation. So I'm going to get out my calculator and do x cubed minus 3x squared minus 24x plus 1. But this is how you could easily do graphs before there were graphing calculators. Um, here's the problem though, this doesn't really fit very nice. So maybe I can do zoom and do zoom fit. I really like that one. I think it's zoom zero. Let me just scroll down and make sure. Sometimes my calculator is a little bit slow to pay attention to what I pressed. There we go. Yeah, zoom fit is zero here. I like that one because it'll help me to find the graph. Great. So this right here, if you look at it, it should look like the graph that I just sketched over here. So let's see if it really looks like that. Well, we should expect that there should be, let's see, a local maximum at negative two. Let's see. We could always do it... Um, well, we can just try to estimate it by saying, well, we can actually do it for real. We can say max. So let's see. That means I need to put my cursor around where the maximum is, and then I need to go a little bit to the left of it because it wants the left bound. So I'll say enter. Puts a little triangle there. Now it wants a little bit to the right of that original point. So maybe I go over here, press enter. And now it wants a guess. So I'll put that in the middle and I'll say enter. And let's see what it does here. Well, x is negative 2. Hey, awesome. And y is 29. Okay, so that should have been at a value of 29. So you see, I didn't quite draw it to scale. I mean, my 1 here, it should have been lower here. But still, it looks pretty good. All right? it's still true here. I just have to label this 29. Well, it's a weird scale. If it goes from 0, this is 1, and then the next one is 29. That's maybe not the nicest scale, but it still gives you, this is why it's a sketch and not a full, you know, complete graph. Well, that's great. That worked. And it turns out you can do the same thing with the minimum. So we can do the same thing. So calc, and we'll actually, let's see, let's try to figure out what the minimum is. So if I go here, I do calc, there we go, and I want the minimum, so number three. It wants the left bound, so let's see, I need to go somewhere near the actual point, but I need to go left of it, so this will be good enough. It wants a right bound. Well, now I have to go past the minimum, there's the minimum, and I have to go to the right of it. Press enter, and then I go somewhere in the middle of those two, and I press enter again. It tells me x is four, and y is minus 79. So that also worked, see? x was four, y was minus 79. So it turns out you could also check for the inflection point, um, although that's harder to do on your calculator, but you could at least, you could check the uh, value when x is zero, I'm sure y is going to be one. We could always do that just to be absolutely sure. So we can go second calc and we can ask for a value and I'll set x equal to zero and I expect then that y equals positive one. Sure enough, it is. And these were the key features of this graph. Remember now, when we say sketch of a graph, it doesn't mean we have to have all the exact things. Right? We don't have to know exactly where everything sits. It's a sketch for a reason. And if you really want to do the exact thing, then use a graphing calculator and then you know, cut and paste it. But I think it's pretty powerful that we can start off with a question 
that asks us without a calculator and we can graph some insane looking thing just by using our calculus tricks. So that's, I mean, this may be very lengthy and it may be kind of gross, but you can do it. You can get the answer. I think that's a really, really cool. So hopefully that helps to explain how we can actually use our calc uh, how we can use just calculus tricks and no calculator needed to do some pretty amazing things, I think.